looking at minimum spanning trees, um, this is a situation where maybe you've got a bunch of houses in a neighborhood and you want to make sure that you run a fiber optic link um, through the neighborhood, so you have to make sure that every house is connected to the fiber optic link somehow. So another situation might be thinking about that with towns or, you know, for mail delivery, you've got to make sure that um, there's a way to get the mail to every single town in the area um, and that might be going through another town on your way but it's basically trying to make sure that every single vertice or every single node in the network is linked via itself or someone else to the main network uh, of everybody so that there's a connection between it and potentially anybody going along sharing different paths so I sometimes think of it as a charm bracelet and you just want to make sure that every node is clipped on to that link somehow, is clipped on to another charm or is clipped on to its own chain um, and make sure that you get them all on there. So one thing you want to be careful of is that it's not a particular route or path between these nodes, it's just that you're going to lay down some ca cables and that all the towns can communicate with each other via those cables that they're sharing. So when you're doing these diagrams, it's important to remind yourself you can actually lift up your pen because that's a common thing that people will forget and it will uh, get them basically get the problem wrong. So I'll remind you of that in the steps as well. So um, if we take a look at this network, the problem that they're giving us here is an example. Um, we're trying to lay down a fiber optic cable for all the different suburbs and so you just need to make sure the cable reaches each town somehow. It doesn't matter from where, just as long as each each little suburb has a cable going to it. And uh, the different connections that are available to you um, cost different amounts. And so they've given you the cost of these different amounts kind of in thousands of dollars. So for instance, if you're going to go between A and B, that connection is $5,000. Um, and between A and G is $11,000. So it's your job to figure out what's the cheapest way to connect every single vertice in this network by a fiber optic network. So we're not going to use all paths, but we do have to make sure that each node is somehow connected to all the others. Um, so our steps for this would be to start with the shortest edge possible. And sometimes you've got more than one short edge. Um, so let's take a look here. We have, looking for the shortest possible connections I can make, I've got a 5, I've got a 3, and I have another 3, and I can't tell um, the difference between those two, and it doesn't really matter, but I also notice there's nothing less than 3, so what I will do is I will start with one of those connections at 3, and again, it won't matter which one you do. So I could start between C and E, or I could start between E and G, but they both have 3, so that's fine. So that's the shortest edge. Um, from number two, I'm going to just add a note there about if there's more than one, doesn't matter. So just adding that in there. If there's more than one shortest option, it doesn't matter which you pick. So here, three was the shortest. We've got two of them. I'm just going to pick one of them. Now I'm going to lift my pin up. And as a habit, some people get really confused on this. I'll just get them to doodle on the side to remind themselves that they've picked the pin up. So I've picked my pin up, and I'm now going to look. The two that I've connected onto this network so far, so you can imagine I've laid down fiber optic cable, cable for $3,000 between F and G. I now want to see, going from either G or from F, so from the two nodes that are now connected, what's the next cheapest possible thing I can do? So I've got a 9, an 11, another 9, a 7, or a 5. And I can see here that 5 is the next cheapest possible thing. So th consider yourself greedy. You're trying to save as much money. so. You, yeah, you could spend $11,000 to get to A, but why would you when you can only spend $5,000 and get to B? Now pick your pin up again and take a look. You've got three nodes that are there, B, G, and F. And I want you to look carefully at any possible shortest option that you can find between going from one of those nodes to one that has not yet been connected. Okay? So if I p t pay attention again, I've got a 9, 7, 9, 11, and I do have a 5. And that 5 goes from one that's already connected, which is what I need. So I'm lay laying down my cable, and I want to connect to it. So I'm going to go to A and make sure that I then pick my pin up again. So here, I've got myself sorted. Now, from A, I can't really do anything, because if I go back to G, I'm already connecting to a network that I've already got. Like, I'm connecting to a town that already has the network. And so that would be a waste of money, and it would make what we see here as a loop. 
and you want to remember that there's no loops involved. So I can't connect A to anything, and I'm going to look at my other options from F, G, and B, looking to connect to a new node, a new vertice that's not yet already on the network. What are my possibilities? 15, 9, 7, and I can see here that 7 is the cheapest. So I'll connect it on. And again, going from the options that I have, I'm looking for the next cheapest that takes me to a new node that is not yet connected. So again, that idea, you do not want to connect nodes that have already been connected. Very important for us. They're written down in red. Um, so the next shortest thing that I have here is a 3. And then from there, what's the pos shortest possibility that I can get to my last node, which is D at 11. So what I do now is add up 5 plus 5 plus 3 plus 7 plus 3 plus 11. So that's 10 and 10 is 20, um, 31, 34. So I've got a total of $34,000 to connect all these um, suburbs for the fiber optic link. And that's going to be the cheapest possibility. Now, one thing that I just want to make sure that you know, I want to demonstrate this again, so I'll just rub that off is that as you're doing this, again, I'll start on this one because it doesn't matter which one you start from. If I start here, I'm going to go for my next shortest, which is 7. But I want to think about that real quick. I've done 3. If I look for my next shortest, I don't want to do this. If you notice here, I've now got two networks laid down, but they're not connected to each other. So the whole point of this is you have to build up from what you've started with. So you would never draw on a new one. Even though 3 is the next shortest available, within the entire network, it's not the next shortest that's actually connected to the one you've just put down. So that's one thing to keep in mind. You have to go from what you've already connected to the network. So in this case, the next one would be 7. And from there, my next option, being the shortest available to me, would be going out to F. And then here, I'm picking my pinup again, because it's not about a route. You want to look again, what is your next possibility? Because it might change where you're going to go. I've got 9 and 5, so I'll look at 5. Um, here I've got 11 and 15 and 9, 11 and 5. I can see that 5 is the next available shortest. And then finally, again, that 11 would be the next available shortest. Reminding me again that here I could use 9, but why would I? Because F is already on the network, so that would be a waste of money, and it would create a loop. So here I'm looking to get number 11 on there. So keep that in mind. Um, another thing to keep in mind as you go about this, you're just going to repeat the steps 3 and 4 as you go along. But let's see if I can show this at the same time. The number of links used will be one less than the, number, than the total number of nodes that you have in the diagram. So here I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 nodes, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 paths. So it's always the links is always going to be one less than the total number of nodes you connected in and there will be no loops. You can see here I've got no closed loops in that diagram. Everything kind of comes to an end and you're not trapped anywhere. Right? I can get out of that space, I can get out of this space, I can get out of that space. There's no loop connecting them together to get you stuck. Again, for instance, if I put that connection in, that link, that would create a loop and I do not want that. So keep that in mind. The number of links will always be one less than the total number of nodes and make sure there are no loops in the diagram.